Today we're talking about a very important subject when it comes to how your vehicle does airflow calculations and fueling, so stick around. <music> What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and before we dive into dynamic airflow I want to take a second to thank all the new subscribers. If you have not rung the bell down there and click subscribe, do so now. That way you don't miss out on any new content like this to help you in your tuning goals. That being said, we're also now on the Instagram. I guess, is that what they call it? The Instagram? Instagram? The IG? I don't know. But nonetheless, search for Goat Rope Garage on there. You will find our profile. And by all means, please share your project photos with the hashtag of Goat Rope Garage. That way the rest of the people out there uh, can follow along with what everybody is doing uh, on their tuning adventures. And thank you for uh, supporting the garage as always. But now today we are talking about dynamic airflow and following that up, why a lot of people probably should be uh, tuning both the mass airflow sensor and the volumetric efficiency table, even though they're not. So let's dive into it. So well, what is dynamic airflow and why is it important? Well, the whole idea behind it was that whenever GM started getting into doing these Gen 3, Gen 4, and Gen 5, the more advanced control schemes, they created dynamic airflow, which is actually the final say in how we do air to fuel ratios on the vehicles. We don't necessarily control dynamic airflow itself, we control mass airflow and volumetric efficiency. Those two things are what are doing the calculations of how much air that we have. It is then applied to dynamic airflow. Our dynamic airflow chooses the appropriate value and says, okay, that's how much air we have. In order to reach our goals, in order to reach stoic fuel, our power enrichment delivery, we need to add this much fuel. But why are we using two different control schemes? And in fact, a lot of people out there aren't. They are using a math only tune or a speed density tune. And that's not always the best idea on the factory ECM. And there's a reason why. Dynamic airflow does its decision making process based on the kind of power requests that we're making to the engine. So as the throttle position changes or the accelerator position changes, we are shifting between mass airflow and volumetric efficiency. Generally, mass airflow is in control maybe 95% of the time, and then volumetric efficiency is there as a sanity check against it, and I've talked about that in the past. That's why mass airflow works as a good setup for a mass airflow only styled tune. But that being said, mass airflow works best in a steady state air reading uh, situation. So whenever we are above that, th that set point, that threshold that's usually around 4,000 RPMs, we know that we are in a steady state or what is considered high speed fueling. That's because even if you were to jam the throttle above 4,000 RPMs, you're not increasing the flow significantly in most situations. Now, honest, obviously on supercharged or turbocharged applications that might be a little bit of a different threshold but on the general threshold we are not changing the state of airflow across the mass airflow sensor now if we are below that set point we're still running on the mass airflow sensor until we give it a lot of throttle and then it switches over to the volumetric efficiency table and not necessarily directly to the volumetric efficiency table but to the predicted a volumetric efficiency table. So in the background, while we are on mass airflow sensors uh, and it is doing the most of the heavy lifting, the volumetric efficiency table is doing predictions about what could happen next. And so we are in a cell on the VE table, but it is saying if we give it more throttle, we're going to go this direction. If we give it less throttle, we'll go this direction. And because of that, it has some predicted changes to the fueling. Whenever you do give it more throttle, it jumps on, it takes control of dynamic airflow, and that predicted fueling is what keeps us from having lean uh, tip in or rich tip out situations. There's some other stuff in transient fueling that helps with that also, but it is that prediction that is what drives it the most. And that is why we need to go out generally and do both a volumetric efficiency tune and a mass airflow tune is because that dynamic airflow, which is the final say, uh, relies on both of them to correctly do its job. So whenever we choose to only use one fueling style or the other, we are limiting the effects 
or the effectiveness of the dynamic airflow system. Now, with all that being said, is there anything else that we really need to adjust on dynamic airflow? Not really. You can bring your mass airflow sensor down to take over lower so you don't have as much volumetric efficiency that you're having to deal with because once you get into high speed mode, then you are basically using just the filtered air mass. The other thing to keep in mind is that air mass is filtered, has been filtered since Gen 3, is still filtered on the Gen 5. And that means that the actual reading that is coming from the mass airflow sensor is being smoothed out before dynamic airflow uses it to do the fueling calculations. So that is yet another reason why it struggles during transit. You can make adjustments to that filtering value, I'm not 100% sure how that will change the way that the mass airflow reacts, but if you were to do a mass airflow sensor only tune, it would not probably be a bad idea to go in there and adjust that filtering and try and get more resolution from the mass airflow sensor before it hits the dynamic airflow calculations. Uh, we can also go in and change a bunch of different ways like the hysteresis on RPMs that allows or uh, works on how the volumetric efficiency table responds to throttle input changes to make sure that we're not bouncing around a lot on the table and basically we start filtering the volumetric efficiency also. And all of these are done in the hopes of creating a smooth driving condition, whether or not it is from steady state driving or transient driving. We want to try and keep the uh, predictions smooth and not jumping around too much. That being said, there are some situations where you might need to make adjustments there, but 99% of the time you're going to be perfectly fine leaving all of that stuff uh, as it is and just making the adjustments to the tuning schemes of the mass airflow sensor and the volumetric efficiency. And this is a prime example of why I've been down on dyno tuners lately, why I don't approve of their methodologies of going in and doing a mass airflow tune only and not adjusting the volumetric efficiency tables because they are being used. If a vehicle is to drive properly, it needs to use both tables because that's the way the ECM was designed to operate. Now, there are ways around that that are not going to be the most efficient way of doing it, but we need to, at the end of the day, realize that every vehicle is different and in order for it to run optimally, we need to work within the systems that we are using. That being said, I'm not going to say that you can't have a math only tune or a speed density only tune that does that works. That's not the case. There's a lot of people that are out there doing it, but they also have some situations that they tend to live with that maybe could be solved by allowing the dynamic airflow system to do its job properly. So just keep that in mind next time you're going out doing your own tuning or you're paying somebody else to tune for you and they are not going to do a proper tune on both the mass airflow system and the dynamic air or the volumetric efficiency system. So. As always, I want to thank everybody for their support, for stopping by the garage, for watching these videos, for liking them. Uh, throwing those thumbs up is the best payment that you can give me. Also, check out the links down in the description. You can get to the GoatRopeGarage.com website where you can find merch, uh, decals, uh, access to the Patreon, which is a great way of getting one-on-one -on -one tuning assistance either through email or on video conference calls. It's up to you. Check that out. And then on top of it, as I said, we've got the new Instagram. Make sure you jump out there. Check it out. Goat Rope Garage on Instagram. And if you want to quickly share any of these videos, you can share the tuning 101.com web address that takes you right to the YouTube Goat Rope Garage landing page. So as always, I want to thank you for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.